The top of the table is very tight. One point between the top three and just three points separating the top five with Aston Villa making up potentially a final Champions League place there. But Tottenham having lost their last couple of games and now two points off the lead with Liverpool and Arsenal chasing down Manchester City. I mean, we talk about maybe Manchester City not looking quite as invincible as they have done, although not actually invincible over the previous season. I need to be careful sitting next to Wrighty talk about the Invincibles. But, um, <laughs> but you know, they, they, they do feel that over previous seasons, they've had little wobbles within those seasons, but then they've gone on these huge yes, winning runs. Yeah. That hasn't quite happened this time around. Just to, to sort of wrap up the, the chat from, yeah, to wrap up the chat that we had with, with Chelsea, you know, they, they had a couple of defeats in a row and they come back, they get pegged back by, by Chelsea. Mm. Do they look maybe a bit more vulnerable this season than they have done in, in previous seasons, where well, they've um, reached those, like, 90-plus points I think it's totals. Yeah, I think it's tough for us to, to say now, Kels, because... Can, can I just say, yeah. by qualify this, because yeah. you're having a little... To I'm not, this in the break as well. I, no, I'm not. All I'm saying is, when you look at the City side mm. that have dropped a handful of points yeah, over, a, over, over a, couple the, of a couple of seasons, yeah. it's maybe not going to be that this time mm -hmm. around. It's going to be a high points total, but yeah. not... You know, okay. yeah, but the thing is, what it's we not going to come down to like one you, game in a yeah, season. Yeah, but like you said, and rightly said, is that they have got the capability of just going on a, a, a twelve-game just winning, winning streak. The, the thing is, is that in this in this time, you know, what you've got to do is you've got to try and get something from them. I said, and, and we did beat them earlier on. We have to beat them at least once if we've got any ambitions of yes. trying to win the league. You have to beat City at least once because I think that the. The little problem they've got at the moment now is that they've got Gvardiol on the left with Kovacic and Doku, and it's quite a new... They're, they're settling in. I think they're settling in. And I remember when I was watching Wolves, that Wolves done a lot of play diagonal over there because they're not quite on the levels of everybody else yet in what they're doing to understand. Mm -hmm. And I think that once the left side starts to really understand what's going on, then City will click into a proper gear. And I think that might be... And that's just me, mm. Kels. I think they, that, that might be a little bit of, um, of, of um, oil in the water. But other than that, I think that they're still the ones. They're still the ones, you know. They weren't great. This is, this is they the weren't thing. great and they we're still not, scored four goals. We're not goals. comparing City to anyone else bar mm. we can't. previous Manchester, yeah, sure. a very recent Manchester yeah. City side. Because mm -hmm. that's the bar yeah. that they have, they have set. And I was, I was watching you sort of nodding along to that. They've got Liverpool, Tottenham and Villa coming mm. up in their, in their next three games after the international break. <laughs> By the end of that, they could be well clear at the top of the table yeah. and they've put a dent in a couple of their title challenges um, campaigns as well. Yeah. But I just wonder if maybe they are marginally more vulnerable than they have been. If teams will think, we've got a chance, rather than we've got no chance. That's a good question. And I think the pattern of their form has been quite interesting because they started the season really well. Six wins in a row, all competitions. Mm. And they went on a run of three defeats in four. And then before yesterday, they were back on a run of five straight wins. And mm. again, all competitions. Mm. The interesting thing is the loss of Kevin De Bruyne because he and Haaland have an outstanding understanding. And when they play together, De Bruyne is able to thread passes through and find mm. Haaland wherever he is as well as he's done so far this season, and, and that's how ridiculous a team they are, um, he would have scored more goals had De Bruyne yeah. been playing. Yeah. And that's given other teams a chance, as you say. Plus that fact, and on these matters I'm going to defer to Rachel here, but Gavardiol, I think, is the lowest profile £77 million pound defender mm. I've ever seen in my life. Mm. <laughs> I mean, he's come in, there's been a huge amount of money, mm. no-one's talking about him. No. And yet... You're right, he's bedding down into a new system. Now, I always saw him as a left-sided centre-half. Yeah. And when he plays for his country, he plays as a <coughs> But he's, trying, he's playing on the left at the moment. So, again, how difficult is that? And I think Kelly's right. With that in mind, it gives the other opposition a, maybe a, just a little bit of a chink of light in so much as maybe we might have an opportunity to, to score goals and take the game to City in quite the same way that we haven't done before. Yeah, I, I think just to... Play devil's advocate and counter that, though. I think, personally, it's very difficult to go from being a left centre back to left back. There is there is an adjustment, yeah. but I think the advantage other teams will get will only be for a very short time. I mean, yeah. both him and Doku, I think, have started very very well, mm. considering not many players go to City and are straight in the team and play that yeah. those significant minutes that they have seen. I do feel that in some ways almost just that newness of those players, though, in some ways, has given Pep an advantage because. 
I think he knows you need to keep developing, you need to keep adapting systems, you, need, mm. you can't be predictable. Um, and I think in some ways, you know, just the, the way even Doku plays, mm. he's very direct 1v1, you know, he's, a, he's more of a traditional winger and he's very difficult to deal with. So I, in some ways I can see teams mm. will try and flip that to be something they can try and play, play on, but I actually think it's... It's a, it's a new strength because a mm. new element of the city that we maybe don't typically see. I think, can I just be fair to, to Arsenal? That game yeah. as well, aren't you? When, mm. when they turn Just to be fair to Arsenal, De Bruyne comes back later in the season. Durian Timber comes back yeah. later in the season yeah. as well. And Timber looked a fantastic yeah. player. That, yeah. 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 that inverted had right side for us, or left side. Um, but, like, you, you made that... There was a good point you just... What I was going to say about that the, the, the left side, again, in respects of Gvardial and Doku, and... Again, I had a feeling that while that game was going on, Jack Grealish is going to be coming on soon because I feel that he does the control. I know that we, you, with Doku, and he has started amazingly, and you don't normally see them come in and, and play that well for City and, and have such an impact. But, like, what I've noticed more than anything in, in the Chelsea game is that they didn't have the control on that left side, and that is why you believe, yeah, Jack Grealish will be probably coming on soon. And that is what I feel teams have to take, take advantage of because we know what Docker can go do that way, but he's going to have to learn what's going on this way. Mm. And some of the times, you cannot, when you get the ball all the time, you're going to take your man on because you want to control the ball as well some of the times and bring it back in. And I think that's why Jack Grealish came on again um, because they're still trying to find that kind of balance on that side of the When you're up against the Chelsea side that have the penetration they do, yeah. you need someone who can hold the ball up, which is what yep. Grealish did when mm -hmm. he came on. Uh, I, I, I like Doku because he does have that desire when he gets the ball to run at the defenders. There <coughs> are lots of pieces across uh, the papers on Sunday um, ahead of the game talking about the new age of the dribbler, mm. the, the player that comes in and stands a defender up and puts him in a difficult frame of mind. Which way is he going to go? And even if they lose the ball, they're willing to go again. Uh, Sterling, uh, Saka, Luis Diaz, yeah. and obviously Docker as well. Last weekend before this against, I think it was Bournemouth, one goal, four assists, the youngest players yeah. to do in the mm. Premier League. And he loves it and he's so young. Mm. Um, so I, I, I think it is going <laughs> to have to be the case that you will need, even though there were pieces saying maybe Grealish's place is under threat, actually... Grealish is going to be very important. Yeah, vitally very important. important. Yeah. Right. And, and having said all of that with City, they are still the, the front runners and they are still <laughs> yeah. the favourites uh, to win the league. If it's not them, who do you think is, is leading the challenge? You've got Arsenal, Liverpool, Liverpool. Arsenal and Liverpool are a point off. Then you've got Tottenham a couple of points off. Then Villa with, with three points to go. And Villa would be hoping for, for Champions League football come the end of the season. That's what you would imagine would be the, the top of, of their ambitions. But are any of the other three well-placed, you think, I, to challenge? I, I, I probably think um, Arsenal and Liverpool right now are in the pole positions to do that. I think Villa are sneaky. Mm. A sneaky, just like... I think that um, Unai is just... You, you lot get on with it, we just want to get fifth and just go about our business. But, like, he's, even them and the run that they're on and how dangerous they looked um, is, is good as well. But I think that you probably have to look at Liverpool and Arsenal um, as the main protagonists in respects of trying to curtail them. Um, we saw what Chelsea done. Um, I think it's going to take an effort from everybody. Yeah. But what I'm pleased about with Arsenal at the minute is um, they're not playing great. Um, you know, we've got some injuries like everybody else. But, they, but they're getting, the, getting it done against the teams that you need to get it done against. And this it doesn't... Like we, we learnt last season, this time of the season where Arsenal were magnificent last season, it doesn't mean anything when you get down there and then City are on their run. You have to be in touch with them. And that's why I don't think people are getting too excited about what's going on with Arsenal at the moment and too negative because we have to stay in touch. And I think Liverpool, starting to see the shoots with Liverpool, Kells with the, the front three looking brilliant. You know, everybody's always talking about the midfield and the holding midfielder. Is, is that the, the player what's missing for Liverpool to get to go where they're going? Um, I think that Van Dijk is back to... You know, Van Dijk, we, we, we know and love as a, as a great player. And they've gone along, gone under the radar in what they're doing, Liverpool. And we know that they've got the experience to be able to, to, to mount a challenge and see it off. So I, I, you can't write Liverpool off, man. What's that, nine, nine, on, the, nine, spin, nine home, on the spin? At, at home. home. 
And, and the front and three look like this. Two or more yeah, goals. two or more goals. Yeah. goals. So the, they, the, they're the, in that place, man. It's, you know, you want that. You want the team strong going to try and challenge this city. They're, they're very similar to City in so much as they're near invincible at home. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and they've got so much firepower. I remember when they bought Gakpo ahead of Manchester United, mm. and some one or two people thought, "Why have you bought another forward?" Mm. But they are a team that if they try one way and it doesn't work, they try another mm. and another and another. Yeah. Um, before they find a way through. And there is no defence so far this season that has been able to curtail them. And Salah, he does so much. And the goal involvements are just ridiculous. Mm. But it's also the way that it creates goals for other players mm. as well. And already they've got an understanding. A nice Ima Nunes. He's, oh, had, he's had some quiet games this season, yeah. Mo Salah, until you look at his numbers. Yeah. <laughs> In those games where you say, it's a ridiculous thing to say, but to go, if you take the goals away, yeah. it's quite enormous. It's, it's so really ridiculous when people yeah. say, yeah, but if you take the goals away, then what are we watching for? <laughs> take the goals and the assists out of the equation. Yeah. The what other is it? side. Is yeah. it all that? You take, you yeah. just, like, you just, he should just be working in a shop or something if you take the goals and the assists away. But, like, you look at him, and you could see that the, there's a, a nice synergy with him and Nunes now. They're actually looking for each other. When you look at them, so you've got Salah, Nunes, Gakpo, Jota... Jota. Mm. And Diaz, I don't think it's got 35 goals between them. That's happening. That's happening. I think the midfield, the midfield is something that will probably be tested simply because of that player that they say they needed, a Caicedo kind of player, which they tried for. But uh, in or Lavia, the, oh, Lavia, also Chelsea. Lavia, yeah. Chelsea. Right, let me ask Go you another question. Go on. So, sorry, Kelsey. Yeah, no, right. it's, <laughs> I'm just going to put my feet up. I don't <laughs> like to. <laughs> if you had, what would you rather have? Arsenal's defensive. Base. I mean, I think they're only this, they've got the second yeah, best defensive best. record in the Premier League, yeah, yeah. or Liverpool's offensive power. I, I, I'm very Arsenal centric because we built on defence, George Graham. So I'm always going to go with defence because what you can what you can find is is like what Arsenal done last year. They share the goals out. Mm. Whereas if you get it wrong in defence and, and you're weak in defence, you lose games. Mm. Whereas you can have a solid defence and not have an out and out striker or strikers as good as them. Them guys are scoring as frequently as them guys are going, but you could still maybe win a 1-0. Mm. But the defence is so solid, Darren, that you know, like, like I say, with Arsenal when we played, um, if we scored 1-0, you know, 1-0 to that, I believed that we were going to win the game. And that is why my mind is always built on defence first. And I know there's no point in me asking. No. <laughs> <laughs> the captain but, of Scotland. See, see, just on that point, mm. it, it is interesting how you do feel the whole team feels and plays differently when you know that you've got a team that yeah. don't let in many goals yeah. that have that yeah. structural base. It's just, it's kind of fascinating how just knowing that makes the more attacking players mm. and the players that can it's play with like that freedom. It's like the safety net. It's like, right, they, yeah. yeah, they, for whatever reason, just actually then feel like they can go and show that, that flair that you need to have in the final third. Mm -hmm. If players can't feel like they can go and express themselves, it doesn't happen, but it, it lifts them knowing that yeah. behind because them, confidence. We're, we're solid. Yeah. The other thing as well, as we say, is that Liverpool have to play Man City twice this season, the first match of which is at the Etihad after the international wow. break. At Arsenal have already... Well, don't start. You sound like <laughs> Jurgen Klopp now. I, <laughs> I feel sorry for him. It's, you know, but a game of that magnitude, how good it is, you know what I mean? I'd love that to have been in the evening or something, man. Gosh, 12.30. Okay. <sighs> but... <laughs> <laughs> But still, still going to be a great game. It's still it going to be an important game. I It'll hope so, Kel. Well. I know I'm not <laughs> advertising, doing great advertising <laughs> for the Premier Klopp, League at the minute. Well, Jurgen Klopp was um, <laughs> complaining about some of the, the scheduling. Mikel Arteta was in a much happier <laughs> mood after their win against Bayern. Yes. Yes, thank you for asking me. VAR was right, the referee was right. Really good decision, really positive from Mikel to speak about that. Yeah, good decision. Uh, Mikel Arteta... <laughs> Loving the referees this yeah. week. Loving the referees. Yeah, I, I think this is what we're going to call the big Ange effect. Yeah. Because after he came out on, on Monday night and said, I'm not going to have a go at the referees. This is a difficult job, mm. which is what Mikel Arteta <laughs> himself said earlier <laughs> in the season. Uh, but not so much after the, the last game. But look, he's, he's come out, he said, I'm very much in favour of the referees. Mm. Now, the only person they've still to win over is Roberto De Zerbi at Brighton, who was not happy yeah. with the way that refereeing decisions went. He said, I don't like 80% of 80%. them. 80%. <laughs> the, the, the interviewer said, the interviewer said, well, that's 20%. You like <laughs> you do your, 80% still a big number. <laughs> yeah. I do feel <laughs> so, from, yeah. what, The latest manager to be upset with referees so far this season. We will talk about that and the, the effect it might have on Tottenham and, and where their season goes from here. Um, 
I, I do like the melodrama. But <laughs> first of all, the Sarabia goal, talking about hyperbole, you got in touch before the show. We love requests. We don't take them very often. Mm. Can we talk about that goal? It's the best goal of the season. I'm always like a permission, <laughs> Kelsey. <laughs> best, best to ask for yeah. forgiveness than permission. Absolutely. But this yeah. is, I mean, like, it's just a lovely goal, this, isn't it? Yeah, honestly, one of the, yeah. the most underrated goal, I think, so far this season, let alone last weekend. Yeah, it's a beautiful the goal. technique, the skill, the wherewithal to think about doing that in that moment of the game is outstanding. Goalkeeper has no chance. Defender lunging, doesn't realise he's going to do it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant goal. It is the control, but I'm like you. I, said, I, I have no idea about mm. the technical ability to be able to, to do that, but I always love when the standing foot comes off the floor. That's one of my favourite <laughs> things to see. Nice I just love it. Yeah. You know what's great about that, that, that goal is that you can see he's done it on purpose in the way that... It's the way he controlled it, right? That first touch. Yeah, you could see yeah. he, he was taken something off the wall. Remember the ball's bending into him. Yeah. It was it was um a really high technical finish because when you look at him, watch his 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 left leg, he's literally he's gonna just take everything off of it. Look, he knows exactly what he's doing. Look where he's touch perfect. Touch to cushion it is magnificent. Absolutely perfect. And from here he could do what he wants. He could he could have flicked it over I you know I'm thinking I could flick it over Ben Davis and <laughs> slide it in the side because I remember watching a goal, what Luis Suarez scored at Anfield against Newcastle, came over yeah. and he controlled it on his yeah, shoulder, yeah, yeah. done his knee, went round the goalkeeper. Those, once you get the first touch right in that area of the penalty box, then you get defenders diving in, goalkeepers have stopped because the touch has finished and killed everybody. Do you think that's the case? Well, the well. defender Burkham comes 98. in and... Sorry, we're having that separate conversation. Sorry. <laughs> It's like, we're, yeah. Darren, that was really entirely my fault. <laughs> that... I went into a little bubble of my own. Sorry. Carry on, sorry. <laughs> sorry, this is very much a show where people like to hear the guests talk. <laughs> Not me reminisce. Girls, you, just went, you just went off on your own, then. <laughs> sorry, Dad. Go on. That's all right. No, 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 don't worry. I, I was only about to make the point uh, that when you're a defender, the, the cushion touch means that even if you come in to try and make the yeah, challenge, because you're anticipating the shot straight away, that's it, you're gone, you're out of the picture. Remember, yeah, expect, that, the people are hoping, defenders are hoping for a bad touch. But, so, yeah. yeah, you're thinking you're going to get, as that ball's come in, you see, you see him run across you and you think there's, you're, in you're waiting his touch because you're thinking if this is it, a little bit I'm in. off, I'm, I'm yeah, in. Yeah. And in worst case, you're thinking, I'm just going to get across yeah. and then if he goes to shoot, I'll block it. That first touch is just sublime. Finished, it's just killed it. Yeah. Beautiful. You can do anything there. A it's just a great goal. goal. That mm. Everybody can enjoy except Spurs fans, yes, because that's two defeats on the bounce now. And, and two defeats in really different ways, but also feels like really damaging ways they've lost those games in terms of just the, the psyche of the, the players. Yes, it, that would be quite a demoralising one because it's especially, like, obviously the Chelsea one, um, which in the, in the end Chelsea ran away with it, but um, and Tottenham started so well in that game. And then everything what you're... What people are saying about Tottenham having started so well, um, well, yeah, if they get a couple of injuries, if this happens, then it goes down to the bare bones, which we saw in the Chelsea game happen. Um, and then, obviously, him playing that high line, everybody saying he's playing so... And then he comes against Wolves, start well again, but then, you know, it just... It, for me, they, they weren't playing in the same way that they were playing. They were very negative in the way that they were playing out. But I think it goes back to what, what you were saying. Sometimes if you've got a good defence, and that's what I... So following Spurs, well, mm. the thing you've, that I've found over recent seasons is that not being able to defend, and the reason for that has been the lack of a left-sided centre-half. Since Van der Ven has yeah. come in, they've got that assuredness at the back. You do get left-back as well, and then you've got the two in front, Saar and Bissouma. So they've got a really good, Rigidance. compact yeah. back seven, if you like, with the goalkeeper as well. But with a left back playing at centre half in Davis, I'll hand over to you because you can describe it much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think you could just tell. To I actually think these results are going in Ange's favour because I think what it says to the board is you need something. Uh, you I need, need more. more players yeah. because I think on the bench they had three players who, who were eighteen, mm. um, and I think Davis and, and Dyer are both very good players. Played a, you know many games in Premier League, really experienced. But it's very clear, and you know, there's been some narrative to that that they're not the Andrew's level. choice. Yes. They're, yeah. it's not, yes. they're not the style of players that he likes to play in those positions, and and that happens sometimes. And it's not necessarily that they're bad players; it's just the style he plays requires certain attributes that mm. don't lend themselves so easily to those players. The, the thing is, Rach Darren, is that I think Levy, this January more than any other time, and I know it's very difficult to get really top end players. 
he really does have to back and with some players. Remember, so only one player who played at the weekend mm. is signed was signed by Ange Postecoglou. Mm. So has he earned the right to Absolutely. go to Daniel Levy and say, "I need Absolutely. players"? Absolutely. And what what he doesn't want to get into is what he done with Poch when Poch after the Champions League, after them finishing second, and Poch needed. He wanted to get some out. He wanted to bring some in, and he wasn't backed. He ended up moving on. Tottenham re kind of regressed, and now to the point where you know Conte and, and Mourinho now Ange is bringing them back. Mm. He needs to be back. I think the difference this time around is that if you look at what Ange has done, you have to it, the context for it is that if they were not doing as well, then Kane scoring 17 goals in 11 games for Bayern Munich mm. looks all the more worse. Yeah. As things stand, Spurs are doing well, scoring goals. They're in that top four, which there. nobody expected yeah. them to be at the start of the season. And you've got Aston Villa, and I think Aston Villa might actually be the one thing that does have to be many things, but that'll be among the things that mm. the hierarchy at Spurs will consider because they are doing so well and they're within striking distance mm. of the top four. So Spurs have to stay in that picture. Yeah. And to do that, they've got to have more depth in January. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but we're not too worried about them. No, right? no, because the, the thing is, people are saying things like, oh, they're only three points better off and maybe mm. one, point, one, one sp place um, above or below, one of the two, but... I don't think you look at that. I think you look at how they're playing and that mentality yeah. um, of, the, of the manager and what's instilled into the players. Yes, they've lost their key, some key players, but the way that they're playing and, and, and the intensity in which they're playing, you can see with the right players for him, they're going to do, do stuff, yeah. Tottenham. Yeah, I yeah. think they need at least uh, one one defender. I think they need another striker yeah, badly because striker. Son's done superbly well, but he cannot be relied on. To he can be relied mm. on, but obviously if he gets an injury, they need that's a backup. A big massive, they really and need a backup centre back. Yeah, good one got as to well. Centre back. I, I think they'll already be looking. They will probably have players in mind. There were one or two they tried to get in the summer, but weren't able to. But they will try and get other people in. They've done too well so far to throw it all mm. away by waiting until next summer. And when you look at the other teams around them who are doing so well, to then kind of give up, if you like, on the ghost and say, look, let's wait until the summer when other teams are buying, recruiting well and moving forward, that really would mm. be folly. And before they know it, they could be left behind. Mm. But as things stand, they're OK. <laughs> They're still revelling in that feel-good factor that Big Ange has brought to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, thank you very much to Rachel and to Darren for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed it more than Big Sam uh, enjoyed Manchester United's 1-0 <laughs> win. There he is, He's Sam yawning. Allardyce, sitting next to Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, I have to say it's the game rather than Sir Alex's company <laughs> that's uh, causing that reaction in Big Sam, but, yeah... The 1 0 win. It wasn't the most exciting <laughs> win, but it was a really welcome uh, three points for Manchester United as, as they keep themselves uh, in with a chance of finishing in the European places this season. Uh, a little bit quieter than the press conference he gave in the week in Toulouse when the Toulouse team <laughs> were partying next door. It was like, what's all that noise next door? Um, after what they did against Luton last week, it was a bit frustrating from his mm. point of view. At nil nil, Brentford had a great chance and Boema missed it, and you felt like that was their moment, didn't you? Yeah, After I mean, that usual service. Yeah, <clears> it, it was a great opportunity. He should have scored. It was just, he lacked a little bit of maybe confidence coming yeah, yeah, yeah. through. I but agree. I think when he's coming at Allison, you know, there's no one better that makes himself yeah. bigger and he mm. stays big and he's so commanding it in those situations. But it was a massive opportunity. And the difference from when I, I watched the game last week at Luton, they weren't clinical. No. Today, Liverpool were very clinical. How many times have we seen this? You've just said it, preparation. Yeah. So we look at Salah's first goal. It's a great little ball to him. It's yeah. all about how he prepares himself, Salah, with his first Yeah, touch. if you watch Salah, run, he runs away. He likes to go out wide. And then he doesn't come, then he goes back inside. His right foot touches absolutely perfect. Sets it lovely, goes away, comes back in. Right foot set. And then it's on his left. When it's on his left foot in that position, Kaz, he's never going to miss the target. I mean, all of it, the, the pass from Alexander-Arnold, mm. then um, Nunez, they're getting a the right little combination there, but you're right, his yeah, first touch is always the winning so formula for a goal. Uh, we've seen a great head already from Akanji. This one's a bit easier for Salah, but still it's really interesting when you see the replay. You can see the real power in his neck, neck muscles that he puts into yeah. it. Simicast to the byline. This is always going to be in Karen after last week at St James's Park. Yeah, I don't think there was any boring, actually, ever doubt. To be, well, fair. to be fair, Dion, I think you can explain the heading technique more. Yeah, than yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at that. This is this is a really. It's just, it's, uh, it looks easy, but it's not. You've only got a small area. As soon as, a, soon as the ball goes over the head of the defenders and the keeper, they're all rushing over, makes that gap a little bit smaller, so he has to get it right. No pace on the cross, 
he has to put pace on the header, so he gets it spot on. You can really see the power. After the Bam. ball's left his yeah, head, you can. then you can actually see All the, the muscles balls. are there, aren't they? You yeah. can see him just punch it forward. Very good header. Uh, and then Jota 3-0. We've seen the game this before, the way he can cut in field and pick his spot in the corner. Yeah, I mean, he had the, the volley on the edge of the box and then stays alert here. And I love him. He just he, he doesn't rush it. He knows he's got to beat his player. Takes another touch, take another touch. Where's the angle? And then I'm set, and then just uses other people to kind of... It doesn't bend it, it's a power shot, but it's just how he misses everybody, because there's a lot of bodies in there, and the keeper is unsighted, but whether he was sighted anyway, he wouldn't have saved it. It's a brilliant finish, and a man that's also in good form. Salah, 200 goals in English football Amazing, now. Amazing, yeah. 198 for Liverpool, two for Chelsea. It's been the most <laughs> unbelievable signing for Yeah, him. I think he's... It's his consistency, as it's season after season. He's yeah. hardly ever injured. Yeah. And it's always consistently scoring. Yeah, I think players that have come to this country to play in this league, if there was a, a, a if it was a league of five, I think he'd be in the top five players that people would spend money to go and watch week in, week out, because he's been outstanding. He really has. Arsenal point off the top. In, in what ways do you think it feels different? Because it does, doesn't mm. it, watching Arsenal this season? Yeah, I mean, it feels less transitional. There was a lot of the games last year where I saw Martinelli and Saka travelling the big distances, being brave 1v1. It feels a lot more controlled. It, it feels like they're really camping teams into the other in their own half. And it's just more passing and more methodical. Um, and that control is because I think he's actually a defensive-minded coach. I think he wants to keep the ball. That's Then you give it away less and you're in less... Um, danger of being counted on. But it is a definitely different feel to them this season, Mark. So it's not quite as thrilling to watch. It's not as pretty, is it? It's not as pretty exciting. More, yeah. They don't care about that. No. Well, I think the, probably the argument is we tried that last season. Yeah. It got us almost to the title, but it didn't get us a title. Right. So we need to actually do something differently I this time. I think there's, with the, the games that they've got as well, you can't play that high-intense football that you did last year because I know they've got injuries this year, but you can't keep that up. You have to remember who you're playing against in that passing game. Gives you more control. Particularly yeah. when you're in the Champions League. Exactly. You, know, you, can't, yeah, do that. you, gotta, you can't do that all the time. Do it at the right times. Yeah. There's times when you can go, wow, wow, but, you know, I think they are being a bit more conservative. It's working mm. for them. Uh, another set-piece goal, Saliba's header. <laughs> I think I might have headed <laughs> it in from a yard. Uh, what about Zinchenko's goal? That, so, was, that was properly good technique. Yeah, that's, that's really difficult to do because you really want to kick the ball as hard as possible. And yeah. He has to take a little bit off it as well. You know, and he has to wait for the ball to come down, otherwise it's going over the bar. Very controlled. I think we count this as a set-piece goal in Karen's book this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Second phase. It's a good finish, yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah, it's just the hang time that yeah. you're doing the yeah. kind of karate kick with it, yeah. you know. It's, um... Oh, it's easy, it's easy. It's easy, it's easy. <laughs> yeah? Didn't train all the time. <laughs> when, when you're trying to make your way at a club, which Fabio Vieira is, is his second season, and, I mean, everybody's got a lot of injuries, so that's not an excuse. You wonder what's going through your mind when you do this which means you're always going to get sent off, which means a three-game ban, which means just at the time when you have an opportunity to, you know, play semi-regularly, you're out of action. It's, it's, it's baffling, isn't it? You said there, it's what you're thinking. The reality is he's not thinking. Um, he's a te technical player that's great with the ball at his feet. He's not a defensive player, and this is just a rash thing, isn't it? He looks, he looks at the man as well. Yeah. That's an 11-man brawl back in the day, let me tell you, because yeah. that is a really bad tackle and it could have really hurt yeah. uh, anybody. Could have broken anybody's legs. He's very lucky, really lucky. That... And interesting, after the last couple of weeks, he didn't make much contact, but that doesn't matter. doesn't matter. If you think about it, the last couple of weeks, we've had tackles like that where it seems to be that they haven't been sent off because they didn't make contact. You're yeah. thinking, well, it shouldn't be up to the opponent to get out of the way. Yes to devalue the challenge and let you off. That's on the way in towards you. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And no, that's, that's a bad one. That, that could have been really bad. And I think referees have been getting it right of late, I feel. Every reason to believe this will be enthralling. I'm Derek Ray, joined here on the commentary box, as always, by Lee Dixon. And every expectation that this will be a captivating contest. It's Wigan Athletic taking on Chelsea. Yeah, thanks as always, Derek. It's a pleasure to be here. Anticipating a really good game today. The atmosphere is great. Certainly buzzing from the spectators' point of view as we head towards kickoff. Hopefully, we won't be disappointed. Oh, he's through here. And that was a heaven-sent opportunity to take the lead so early. First goal is so important, Derek. Sometimes you're not ready. And he's through here. Gives it a go. There it is. A delightful start to this match. Just what they were hoping for. 
Well, we're going to see the replay. The goalkeeper won't want to see this again. He gives the ball away. Still a bit to do, to be fair, but it's his fault. A chance to revisit the goal. So the match has restarted. 1-0 here. Timo Werner. Well, this could pose problems for the defenders. Is this the moment? And a goal! An end-to-end -end game! And they weren't behind for long! Well, here it is again, and I wonder how he waltzes past the defender so easily. There's still a lot of work to be done, but the keeper presents the near post on a plate, and he's punished. That's quite remarkable. Even Steven won a piece on this match. In with a chance. Surely, Thierry may. Plenty of options. Untidy on the ball. And got a Conte. On to Werner. Oh, a lovely ball. Big opportunity. And now he must score. And a goal to delight the fans. Just what they were hoping for. Well, as we look at this again, the keeper's every right to ask where his back line was. But 2v1 in the end, he's thinking now, is he going to pass or go round? He's got no chance.